did you get an Ender 3? Maybe you got an Ender 3 Pro. Or maybe you got a version 2. Are you asking yourself these questions? Why is my bed not level again? I just leveled it. Uh, why can't I get anything to print right? Oh, not another clog. Why is my extruder skipping again? I've cleaned this thing like 15, 20 times and I still can't get anything to freaking stick to it. I've tried everything to get this print off the build plate. It's been like an hour. Why can't I get it off? If any of that sounds familiar, then you're in luck because today I'm going to give you five upgrades that will not only make your prints better, but will make your printing life easier. Coming up next. Welcome to Farms and Speed Time for your 3D printing tips, tricks, and how-tos. So today we are going to be discussing five ah! upgrades that you can do on your either Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or Ender 3 version 2. All right? If you're here, you're probably interested in some upgrades. Uh, also, you're probably looking at what can make your prints better or, or even make your printing life easier. And I believe that these made my printing life way easier from when I first started out. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before we get into that list, there's a few that are grouped together. Really, it's only the first one um, on my list that is grouped together. And that's because a lot of us shop on Amazon due to its convenience. And all of those parts come together in a package deal. So um, you can buy them individually uh, and you can buy them from other vendors. I also shop on TH3D. They have fantastic parts and I have trusted them with a lot of my upgrades as well. All right, so moving into it. To start, we have Bed Springs Metal Extruder and PTFE tube. That is all number one. And like I said, they come oftentimes together. Number two is mesh bed leveling or auto bed leveling. Um, again, we'll get more into detail with that. Number three is a PEI magnetic flexible build plate. Fantastic upgrade. All right. Number four is your Mark 8 wear resistant plated copper nozzle. And number five, right, is your hot end cooling. I have the Pets Fang on mine, but there are several other ones. And again, we will get into more detail. And you know what? Let's do that now. So the first upgrade that we are going to discuss is your metal extruder, your bed springs, and your PTFE tube. So bed springs, the ones that come stock on all the Ender 3 series, uh, they, they're awful. Um, I was finding myself having to replace my springs about every two to three, or not replace my springs, but level my bed or re-level my bed, which everyone knows is kind of a pain in the butt, um, every two to three prints, and when I say two to three prints, um, that was like five or six hour prints, this was like right in the beginning when I was kind of getting my bearings and, and learning everything. And um, for any experienced 3D printers out there, five or six hour prints is not really, uh, is not a terribly long print. Um, so those having to re-level after two or three prints, you're talking less than 20 hours of printing. I mean, that was, it was getting ridiculous. So I dove in, uh, put the springs on, and I, I swear to you, I have not had to level it. Uh, but maybe two or three times and it's normally when I do an upgrade or, or I bang it or, or, or some type of other uh, malfunction, I, I might level it just to make sure, All right? Um, so bed springs, the metal extruder, so the plastic one that comes on it, the arm on it to feed the filament in, uh, it, it breaks really easily. Um, again, mine probably broke uh, 15 hours into printing, maybe 20 hours uh of total print time uh maybe i adjusted it too tight maybe i just mashed it one time too much uh some people don't have any problems with it but mine i had immediate trouble with it uh again cheap upgrade uh not not terrible at all and last on on, on this group of upgrades is the ptfe tube the ptfe tube that comes stock on it uh, this is also some people swear that they have no problems with it and it's really not a big deal um i i didn't really have a big deal with it 
just using standard PLA, but then I started using PLA plus or um, if I was using uh, any type like wood filament or something like that, um, it started to get gummed up and, and my filament wasn't feeding very nicely through it. So again, it's not a terrible upgrade. So there are two brands that I've used. Uh, I've used the Capricorn tubes. You can find them all over Amazon. Um, they work great. Uh, and I really have nothing bad to say about them. Um, the other tube that I uh, have used uh, from TH3D is their, I believe they call it their Tough Tube. Um, the Tough Tube, uh, to me, is actually just more attractive than the Capricorn. The Capricorn kind of looks cheap to me. Uh, the Tough Tube has like a brighter blue. That's really the only difference, um, but, and I really like the Tough Tube. Uh, I haven't had any problems with it. Um, and I haven't had any problems with the Capcorn. I have a Capcorn on my uh, Ender 5 Plus and it's worked fantastic. All right, so let's get into that uh, second upgrade. So our second upgrade is the mesh bed leveling or auto bed leveling. So if you have Ender 3 version 2, you are in luck. Um, you can just go to GitHub and I will have a link for it. You can get mesh bed leveling. They have a uh, 3 by 3 I think they have a four by four and a five by five. I have five by five mesh bed leveling. And what that basically means is, is there's a five by five grid on your plate and you level each one of those spots. And as it prints, it compensates for it. Why is this so great? Um, well, one, a lot of the plates that come on the Ender series uh, come from the factory a little warped. Uh, some are are you know warp like this and some are are concave um they mine was had a little concave in it so i would level four points like standard and in the center when it would start to print i was having adhesion problems um so installed mesh bed leveling and that fixed the problem immediately um the other way to get around this is is glass and I had a glass bed on mine um, to start with but I was still having adhesion issues just in the very center so I I installed mesh bed living in it and it fixed the problem um, if you have an en standard ender 3 or you have an ender 3 pro which I don't know if you can do the mesh bed leveling um, oh and mesh bed leveling not like free but it's just, it's just a simple update um, anyway carry on if you have an Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro, the other thing that you can do or is get auto bed leveling. I think they run about a hundred bucks, so that's definitely a pricey upgrade. I'm telling you though, I have auto bed leveling on my Ender 5 Plus and it's fantastic. Um, some people don't like it. Some people would rather not have it and just do the standard. Um, it's really kind of a personal preference. This is really the only upgrade that uh, doesn't work across the board for everything else. All right, number three on our list is the PEI flexible build plate. That is this guy right here, right, right here. PEI flexible build plate. I have a Fizatech which I got off of um, Amazon. I like it because it is a little thicker, and it has that PEI coating on it. So. Uh, I didn't know much about the PI coating, and the nice thing too is it's magnetic. So you just pull it off when your parts are done. You just flex it, and it pops right off. If you're printing a lot of parts, it's really nice um, because they just pop right off. And if uh, you're printing something and then you let it cool down completely, a lot of times I'll just come and I'll move my stuff, and it'll be completely detached from it. And it has fantastic adhesion. And this thing has almost 200 hours of printing and it looks brand new, right? The way that I do that or the way that I keep it looking brand new is every time I'm done, and you can, you do this with your glass bed too, is you just take some isopropyl alcohol, spray it on, wipe it off, and it's, it's perfectly good. Um, some people, you know, take their glass beds and clean it with just soap and water and, um, and then clean it with isopropyl alcohol. I've never had to do that. I only have used isopropyl alcohol on all my beds to, to keep them clean. Um, it does a fantastic job of keeping everything uh, neat, tidy, clean, and, and adhering fantastic. Um, obviously, you don't want to do it when the bed is heated up. 
you want to do when it's clean or right before. So right before I I start my print, uh, right before I hit the preheat, I wipe everything off and then I hit that preheat button. It works fantastic. All right, moving into that fourth upgrade. For our fourth upgrade, it is our copper plated wear resistant uh, Mark 8 nozzle. Um, before I uh, even purchased this nozzle, I had been purchasing, you know, the standard brass nozzles that we're all used to. Um, I had absolutely no trouble with them to start out with other than, you know, the occasional clog, having to replace them. They're a pretty consumable item. Um, so there's no problem in getting those. I mean, you find them all over Amazon. Um, I actually did not trust uh, getting them from Amazon because there are so many mixed reviews. Uh, you never kind of know what you're going to get. I had a few bad purchases from Amazon, so I only trusted um, TH3D, and that's where I got all my nozzles from. Uh, I did end up purchasing the wear-resistant uh, copper plate nozzle uh, just to give it a try. Um, it was kind of like a backup. Sat in my drawer, my parts bin, for a little while, and then uh, I, I started running low on nozzles, so I decided I got a clog. And, and decided to switch out. I was, was like, well, what do I have to use, lose? Uh, so I switched it out and it, it really surprised me. Um, it basically, it, it lasted probably around 250, 300 hours before I, I really had any trouble with it. Uh, the brass nozzles, I, I didn't really have any trouble with it until I started to print with uh um pla plus um or pla max or pla pro whatever you want to call it there are several different names out there uh, when, once i started printing with that uh i would get clogs a little more often um and and i mean it's probably just because there's additives in it to, to make it more flexible make it more strong uh definitely if i printed with something like wood filament or something that had some type of fiber in it uh like whether it's those glitter ones um, it definitely uh, would wear out the brass nozzles quickly. The, the copper-plated nozzle has been fantastic upgrade, though. They are definitely more expensive. Uh, it runs about uh, 10 or 12 bucks for one nozzle as compared to uh, getting you know 15 or 20 nozzles for the same price of the brass ones. Uh, but there's a tremendous amount of heat from it. Uh, they print fantastic. One thing that is a definite plus to it is um, the brass nozzles tend to get gummed up after a while. So if you put a lot of hours on them, even if they don't clog or anything, and they've just been putting in a lot of work, uh, they don't, or, or they tend to get, uh, you know, a little gummed up on the outside. Occasionally, after you print, you have to clean them off. Uh, not with the wear resistant ones, that, or the copper plated uh, one. It just it stays clean uh and if there is any type of stuff on it, you just really just pull it off with some pliers there's no no scraping no having to heat it up it just pops right off so a fantastic upgrade um that uh is really something that isn't terribly expensive and, and lasts forever man i cannot tell you how much i've, I've only bought in two nozzles and i put Probably close to 700 hours since I bought that first nozzle of printing time. So, uh, move. Let's move into that last upgrade and see what we got there. All right, number five on our list is the um, hot end cooling. Hot end cooling. Um, so, I have the Pets Fang on mine. It's free off of Thingiverse. You just print it out. You install it. It's a pretty simple build. Um, the reason that I ended up installing uh, upgraded or upgrading my hot end cooling was uh, basically my uh, standard 4010 uh, cooling fan went out. I, I couldn't find one at the time. Suppliers were it was in in you know huge demand uh, and, and nobody had them. So I looked at what my options were and I ended up finding the pets fang and that it would take a 5015 fan i think is what i have now which is same power fan you just basically splice it in you know nothing to it and um i ended up installing that and it has worked fantastic and what i noticed is that it basically made me able to print longer uh much cleaner bridges and fantastic overhangs 
Um, I can print upwards of like a 70 or 80 degrees without supports. I, I, and that's pretty crazy when you think about it. Um, and I, I would never not support those if I was doing, you know, some crazy print. Uh, but, you know, it's nice to know that I'm able to print that. So um, there's another one on Thingiverse called the Hero Me, which I may try out in the future. Just basically because the Pets Fang, you kind of have to, you know, remove everything to get access to the hot end. And it's a little bit more of a pain than it was with the standard shroud but other than that it has been a fantastic upgrade all right that's it for today the five upgrades that i think will not only make your 3d printing life easier but will help improve your print quality on your ender 3 series so if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click that subscribe button. Don't forget to like the video. Um, I will have a lot of videos coming up, including tutorials, more tips and tricks, and a lot of build videos, including things like Stormtrooper helmets, uh, Night Helmet for my kids, um, Boba Fett, Mandalorian, um, obviously a Star Wars fan. Um, so I will have plenty of builds coming up. So again, click that subscribe button to keep the channel going and to further your support. And if you'd like to go a little bit further and support the channel, you can find a link in the description below that says buy me a coffee and you can donate some money to not only fund further builds, but also uh, help support the channel. All right. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you guys next time.